Coming up on the Sark Fighter podcast, the best way for you to find out what's going on with you and how to deal with it. So there's a sarcoidosis 101 pulmonary, a sarcoidosis 101 cardiac, and so on. Unveiling Possibilities, the 2022 Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research Annual Summit. And we'll be talking with Mindy Buchanan, who's done all the heavy lifting to put this summit together. Um, but there are so many, so many amazing opportunities with this alliance. Um, it's I, Don, I have to tell you, um, I've been in healthcare nonprofit for uh, 17 years now. And I have to say that this alliance is probably the most excited I've ever been. My interview with Mindy coming up. This is the Sark Fighter Podcast, living with sarcoidosis and other rare diseases. Here's your host, John Carlin. Hello and welcome to the Sark Fighter podcast brought to you in part by a grant from A-Tire Pharma. I am your host, John Carlin, the Sark Fighter, if you will. And today I want to talk about a fantastic opportunity for you to learn more about what's going on with your body and sarcoidosis and your mind and your life and everything that comes with the medication and the side effects, all the things that make your life with sarcoidosis a reality. So no matter what kind of SARC you have, and there's so when I say kind, I'm talking about do you have it on your skin? Is it affecting your eyes, your lungs, your spine, your heart, multiple organs? Uh, sarcoidosis finds a way to get into all the various different parts of our body and affect us in different ways. Well, you'll have a chance to learn more about what's going on with you. You'll be able to hear from the nation's leading experts, and then also from other patients and caregivers. So maybe you can compare notes as to how they're dealing with the disease or different manifestations of the disease. You're trying to figure out what's normal, what's not normal. And talking to other people sometimes is just absolutely the best thing you can do. And if there was ever an opportunity to talk to people who understand what you're going through, people who get it, It'll be the annual FSR Summit, and it's coming up on July 30th and 31st. It's virtual again this year, meaning you will join from home, but think of this as a giant Zoom call that includes sessions, coffee breaks, exhibit halls, anything you can think of, panels and the experts and access and all those different things. And it's all going to be a part of the summit this year. And joining me today to talk about that is the person who has done so much to put all of this together. Uh, she is the Director of Patient Services for the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. Her name is Mindy Buchanan. She has been on the show before. I consider her a friend and uh, someone who has helped guide me through this process. She, she is the one who runs the Advocate Program and does so much for those of us with sarcoidosis and Mindy will be joining me next here on the Sark Fighter podcast. Hi, I hope you're enjoying the Sark Fighter podcast. You may be wondering, what can I do to help? How can I be a part of the sarcoidosis solution? It's simple. Make a donation to KISS. Kick in to stop sarcoidosis. 100% of the money goes to the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. Look for a link in the show notes of the Sark Fighter podcast. Welcome back to the Sark Fighter podcast. And joining me now is Mindy Buchanan, who is the Director of Patient Programs for the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. And Mindy, today I find you in Berlin, Germany. Welcome. Thanks, John. Thank you for that nice welcome. Yes, indeed, I am in Berlin, Germany today. <laughs> you are a world traveler. I've never seen anybody who's such a globetrotter as you. You spend some time in the United States, out west, and then, then you're always in Edinburgh, and now you're in Deutschland. How do you do it all? Yeah. Well, uh, I keep central hours. So I work uh, the same as I did when I was in Chicago, and that makes it a little easier for everyone and me. <laughs> 
All right. Well, that's awesome. And I appreciate you. Uh, what time of day is it? There? It's uh, it's noon as I'm speaking to you. What time is it there? In Germany, it is um, just almost 630 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's not too <laughs> terrible, bad. We're going to talk about the summit today, which is coming up. Um, first of all, why don't we just tell people uh, before we get into all the great things that can happen, when is it, how do you sign up? What happens when you sign up all that kind of stuff? Let's just get people one step down the road. Yeah. So the summit is July 30th and 31st. That is a weekend and it's runs from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We've built in lots of great times um, as always requested from our patients. Um, and you can sign up via our website. There's a nice tidy page. In fact, I think there's a, a little pop up box that shows up. If you go to stopsarcoidosis.org, you can click on that and it'll get you right to the summit page where you can uh, register. It is um we also have scholarships still available. So if you need support in getting um, registration fee covered, please go ahead and apply for a scholarship. We've had some amazing generous donors um, in support of our scholarship programming specifically for the summit. And so we're really excited to be able to offer those this year. The summit is where FSR gathers all of the top people in the field of sarcoidosis and brings them together and you you touch on all the different things that are happening in terms of progress or in terms of not even progress, but just for, for people living with sarcoidosis, trying to figure it all out, learning about sarcoidosis. And there's all these different sessions. Uh, back in the pre-pandemic world, this was an event that happened in person. So you showed up in a city and you went from room to room and, and you kind of chose, uh, you know, which sessions you wanted to go to. And now you're doing it basically via a Zoom call. How does that work for people? Yeah, Joe, that's a great question. What's interesting is that um, we never did multiple sessions at our um, in-person conferences. It was a one day thing and we did one session after another and there weren't multiple I tracks and different choices. So the, the fun thing about going virtual has really opened up opportunities to run multiple uh, sessions at the same time. So uh, we run a chronic sarcoidosis session and a sarcoidosis 101 session. Uh, and sarcoidosis 101 sessions, um, they're based on different manifestations. So there's a sarcoidosis 101 pulmonary, a sarcoidosis 101 cardiac, and so on. Um, and there's their sister session, which is chronic. Um, and 101s are really meant for folks who are new to sarcoidosis, it's meant to provide foundational knowledge about the disease, um, what it is, how it's often treated what kinds of things to look for. And the chronic sarcoidosis sessions are really meant for folks who have had sarcoidosis a longer time, have been dealing with this disease a longer time, um, have a wealth of knowledge. We know that our folks have so much knowledge about their disease. Uh, we often hear, oh, I know more than my doctor. Uh, so that's the chronic true. sessions are for those folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have world-renowned experts for both tracks. Um, so whether you're going to 101 or you're going to chronic, um, you can. Uh, we have excellent experts on both of those. Uh, the nice thing is too, you can skip around. So if you start in 101, you think, "Wow, I'm, I think I passed this. I know more already." You, you can skip over to the chronic session at the same time. It runs concurrently, so you can definitely just pop around. Got it. So, uh, so you have 101 but you have 101 in various different categories of sarcoidosis. So if someone has just been diagnosed with cardiac, you have a beginner's version of cardiac sarcoidosis, mm -hmm. and then you've got an advanced version of cardiac. And you're doing that with what pulmonary cardiac gastric. Am I right? Pulmonary cardiac and neuro. Neuro. Um, okay. Three, neuro. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the three there, pulmonary cardiac and neuro. Um, and then we have oh, what's called overview sessions. So we have um, skin sarcoidosis panel. We have ocular sarcoidosis and those are overview. So those are meant for everybody with that particular manifestation on um, their broader in context. Um, so, and then um, we do have a session on gastric sarcoidosis and actually GI related um, issues from treatment of sarcoidosis. And that's a plenary session. So that's open to everybody. Um, and it will be broader in context as well. So our plenary sessions will be broader. The chronic sarcoidosis are folks who are more, um, have had the disease longer and the 101 are for folks who, um, are new. And then the overview sessions are also broader. So the plenary sessions 
are where you start the morning every day, right? That's that's where sort of everybody is invited to gather, and you've chosen various topics. Now we've all, you, one of them, the first one, in fact, has already been featured here on the Sark Fighter podcast, but that's talking about what's next for FSR and uh, and how patients are going to be better served when it comes to identifying and finding a clinic that can really help them, right? And that's, that's, right. that's a whole new mission. And I, I know we've talked about it um, a, a two sessions, two podcasts ago now, um, but do you want to just touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so the FSR uh, Global Sarcoidosis Clinic Alliance um, is, I know, (laughs) it's a membership uh, program for clinics or for for providers serving patients with sarcoidosis who are dedicated to um, working with patients with sarcoidosis. And some of the things that are coming out of the, the alliance, some opportunities for patients that are coming out of the alliance include support groups, ask the alliance members. Uh, centers. Some of them already have support groups. So FSR will be providing support and training for those support groups that already exist. And then we'll be sourcing new opportunities for our volunteers to step up to the plate and host a support group um, associated with an alliance. In fact, we're going to be launching an application process for that very soon. It will be available at the summit itself, um, both in the document gallery and then at every alliance booth in the um, exhibit hall, which we'll go into a little bit later because I'm very excited about that. Um, But there are so many, so many amazing opportunities with this alliance. Um, It's, I don't, I have to tell you, um, I've been in healthcare nonprofit for uh, 17 years now. And I have to say that this alliance is probably the most excited I've ever been for any project for patients. And I keep in mind, I've worked solely on the patient programming side for the last 17 years. Right. And I have not seen anything as robust, as ambitious, and as exciting as the, as the uh, FSR Global Sarcoidosis Clinic Alliance. Um, so I am thrilled that we are going to be sharing information on that very first day, kicking out the summit with a plenary session that includes some of our clinicians who have signed on to be part of the Alliance, as well as some of the patients who go to those clinics um, to help support sort of and share the patient perspective of what this Alliance means for them. So it's really going to be a great opportunity for folks to learn more about the Alliance, what's to come, especially in 2023 and beyond, because we're extremely excited about all that programming. Um, And also to learn more about opportunities to volunteer with FSR as a support group leader or as a community outreach leader as part of the Alliance. I've I've just pulled up the website and I'm looking at a a couple of the things here. Uh, And I know the two of these jump right out as things that people bring up all the time on the podcast when when we talk to them. One of them is the anti-inflammatory diet. Mm -hmm. People want to know what they can do to stop the, you know, it's a, you, you may not have ever been interested in eating well until you got sarcoidosis. And now anything you can do to stop the inflammation. And I've gone through that and talked about it a lot. Um, what, what can people maybe find out about that during the uh, summit? Yeah, so we actually in that session, we've had her before. She, uh, her name is Sydney Axelrod, and she showed up last year uh, and did a cooking and nutrition session with us last year. Um, and it's a really great because she does have a lot of patients with sarcoidosis. She's super well versed in the disease. Um, and uh, so I think that it's a great opportunity to kind of learn more about different diets. Um, you know, I think folks will kind of learn from that to be gentle with themselves and know that, you know, not, you don't have to go all or nothing all the time. And um, I think there's a lot of opportunities for folks to kind of learn what might work for them, try some things out uh, and, and see how they feel. Well, I think it's important that you're talking about it because um, I know in, in my journey, when I've talked to doctors and I've said, is there some way I can change my diet? They usually say, nah, but I just think doctors are looking for different solutions than patients. Yeah. I mean, I think it depends on which doctor you're asking. Certainly I know a hand, quite a few doctors <laughs> in sarcoidosis who would say, go to a dietitian or try the anti-inflammatory diet okay. if you um, okay. want to. And I think um, oftentimes what sometimes works for patients is to say, look, I want to try this diet. What do you think about that? 
Um, and I think probably most physicians would come back and give you their opinion on that particular diet. Um, but it's always a good idea to check with your provider um, because sometimes the kinds of medications you're on can be affected by your diet. Um, and so that's one thing to keep in mind too, that it's not just about what you're eating or not eating, but it's also making sure that you have someone who has a comprehensive understanding of what medications you're on, plus the diet that you're wanting to go toward. Um, and you can ask them about that. And I think, you know, doctors have different opinions. I think we have a lot of very patient centric doctors these days. And I think that they're more inclined to uh, support efforts toward diet. Well, I, I, you know, support it or not, I just, if it works, I want to do it. I, you know, and I think that's, that's what I hear from people. Another topic is fatigue management. I don't think I've had a single person on the show who hasn't talked about fatigue. Yeah. So I'm um, very exciting. We have Dr. Divya Patel who will be hosting a fatigue management session. And that is a very exciting session. Um, Dr. Patel is one of those very patient centric uh, physicians. I think you've probably had Dr. Patel on your show at some point. I have. Yep. Uh, certainly those of you who have followed uh, FSR have seen Dr. Patel at many of our events. Um, and she's going to be giving a great presentation on fatigue management. And sometimes, um, you know, it can feel like an uphill battle with fatigue and there's not like a, a, a quick fix for fatigue. I think everyone with sarcoidosis knows that. And I think Dr. Patel will be presenting some options for folks or some information. She'll definitely be answering folks questions. Um, so that will definitely be one not to miss if you have some questions about fatigue. The other bullet point we have on the website here, and I've not had anybody on the podcast and would like to, because this can be difficult managing finances with a chronic disease especially when you've got an orphan disease that your insurance company's never heard of or doesn't necessarily want to support. So you, people will get some advice on that too. Uh, yeah, that's right. In fact, we have a, a world-renowned expert who's written for Forbes um, going to be there to give that session. Uh, and that will be a great opportunity. Uh, he's, he's done many uh, chronic disease talks. Uh, and so he'll be helping people set up opportunities, how to keep yourself financially secure when you're dealing with this chronic disease. I mean, everybody um, who's dealing with this disease feels some financial burden from the disease itself, right? Because maybe you, it's hard to get your prescriptions filled, or maybe when you change insurances, it might look totally different. Um, and it's also just sort of helping set yourself up for knowing that you have this disease, knowing that these financial burdens exist, what can you do to keep yourself financially secure and stable, especially as you um, get older? Uh, so it's going to be a great opportunity for people to have access to him. Um, and his name is Martin, I'm just sorry, I'm forgetting his last name right now, but let me just look here. Uh, Mar Martin Schen Schenkeman. Okay. Uh, and yeah, again, uh, we'll be posting information. Uh, he'll be all over social in a, in a few days, by the way, so we'll have more information about him, uh, about that session in particular. Got it. Now, People and, and I, I'm looking. I we could go piece by piece by the agenda, but I don't. I think that would be tedious for the listeners. But it's a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, do you want to tell people about the event that I'm hosting with the uh, yeah. uh, patient advisory yeah. committee? Yeah, thanks, John. That's such a great one. So uh, John is hosting the life hacks session with some of our patient advisory members, committee members. Um, John is the co-chair of the patient advisory committee, and we have a number of patient advisory committee members. We have uh, Janet, Calvin, and Teresa all there from the patient advisory committee to talk about their experiences with sarcoidosis and sort of what their life hacks are. So each one comes with a, a number of back professional backgrounds and different experiences. Teresa's had sarcoidosis for 40 years. She, you know, she was a single mom and she changed her career while having this disease. Um, you know, Janet, uh, <laughs> she's probably going to not love me for this, but I have in my mind a moment where Janet talked about skiing with an oxygen tank. Yes. Um, and that picture is forever in my mind. And I think, wow, what a great opportunity to share your experience with the, uh, the patient community that you can really live a great life um, with sarcoidosis. It just changes a little bit. Right. And I think John, you have, I mean, you through this podcast and, and getting to know folks that way, have definitely kind of um, held that torch up for a lot of people, I suspect. Um, and then Calvin Harris, who also writes for Sark News um, on the bio news feed, uh, and probably folks will know him as well. Uh, and he has a lot of great uh, life hacks as well. Yeah. 
Yep. Calvin's uh, training and running long distances now, even though he's really yeah. suffering with sarcoidosis. So uh, right. he's found a way to do it. He's found a way to do it. And he has a very, uh, very high up job too. Um, I think he is the CFO of the urban league. So he actually uh, just got, he just changed jobs actually. And I, oh, I don't he did. To, oh, he's the CEO of the New York CPA association. I might okay. be missing up, but yes. So he, um, he, did, he just became a CEO. So we're very lucky to get yeah. our little time out to catch Calvin right now. <laughs> okay. All right. See, so, uh, wow. yeah. So it's amazing to hear these stories and really, yeah. I mean, it's amazing to kind of hear folks and understand what they've gone through. And, you know, I mean, I think it's the patient advisory uh, committee, just so everyone knows, um, really put some thought and effort into even the name of the summit, which is unveiling possibilities. Um, and these folks come together to think about, I mean, John, you come and all the members of the patient advisory committee come and we meet with them to think about what's best or what patients are, what we're hearing from patients, what patients want to know. And the committee really believed in uh, setting patients up for like the best life possible, learning how to increase your quality of life, learning how to uh, connect with others who are living with this disease, um, sometimes very long term. I mean, like I said, Teresa's had this disease for 40 years. So the coffee breaks are very popular. W what is a coffee break in a virtual session? Oh my gosh, John, you hit the nail on the head. The coffee breaks were a huge hit last year. We're so excited to bring them back. They're just an open Zoom room. So you and me were on the Zoom room right now. And it's like just like that. And each hour is hosted by a new patient advocate. So those are volunteers with, pay, with FSR. Um, and every hour we get a new person hosting the coffee break. And they're open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. during the summit days. And it's just a Zoom room. You can pop in there and hear what the conversation's about, talk with other folks. Uh, it's a great place to feel like, uh, you know, you're not in this virtual space alone. I know a lot of folks come to the summit just to learn, just to do the sessions. And they're not really interested in networking, but a lot of patients really and caregivers really want to network. Um, and this is a great opportunity to do that because you can just pop in, you can talk to folks, you can just pop in and just hang out in there. You don't really have to say anything if you don't want to, um, but it's a great opportunity. And I think last year, one of the best quotes that we had was something like, it was a virtual it was a virtual event, but I felt like I was there and I got to know so many people. Uh, and I think that, you know, that's a really important thing. And we've spent a lot of time picking just the right platform for this event um, to really uh, enhance opportunities for patients to network with one another. The coffee break is one of them. You can connect one-on-one -on -one with anyone in the summit and you can have a one-on-one -on -one video chat with them. You can even have that video chat go on while you're both watching a session. Um, so it's a really cool opportunity uh, to connect with other folks. One of the things that I enjoy when I go to conferences is sort of the exhibit hall where you can go from booth yeah. to booth to booth and talk to vendors. And, you know, people are always so up in these uh, uh, environments, no matter what the topic is, but that's actually also true for sarcoidosis. So tell us about the exhibit hall, what people can see when they go by. And, and I understand it's new and improved this year in terms of the size. It is huge, John. <laughs> Um, so everyone in our exhibit hall are supporters of our community. Uh, they believe wholeheartedly in this event. They are there to share and to provide information for patients and caregivers. Um, we have our great sponsors uh, led by H Tire Pharmaceuticals. Uh, and then we have an amazing array of community partners, which includes um, the sarcoidosis group in Spain, because we will be giving uh, all of our live sessions uh, live translated in Spanish. Um, so that's a new feature for this year as well. So they're there and all of our community partners are there like needy meds and American lung association along with our sponsors. Um, and then excitingly, we have our FSR global sarcoidosis clinic Alliance members that will be there. They've set up their booths. I've already seen them. Everyone they're amazing. There's so much information in there. Um, some of them will be manned. You will be able to connect with people in the booths throughout the booth exhibit time. Uh, so that's between 8 and 10 a.m. and between 
between 12 and noon. That's central time, folks, so <laughs> in case you're wondering. Uh, and it's a great opportunity to be able to connect with those folks and to see all the information that they have. There's so much information available to patients through the exhibit hall. I can't even explain how many things there are to download, how many links there are to click, how many videos there are to watch. <laughs> it's, it's really quite amazing to see this community blossom so much and to be there uh, to support patients and to really um, make sure that their information is available to them. Uh, so it is a great opportunity to get those, uh, to get introduced to some of our uh, Alliance members. So if I'm a patient and I want to find out more about a medication or a research project, that type of thing, that's, that's what I would do in the exhibit hall. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that in the exhibit hall. Um, and then also you can do that. We have a research session this year. Um, actually, we had a research session last year as well. But this one is a little bit different. Um, so we'll be having a doc, uh, several doctors on that session who do clinical research. One of our fellows um, who's at the service funded, um, along with our chief strategy officer, Trisha Shivas, who will be there um, to support and to kind of help frame some of the work that FSR is doing. I mean, I think there's seven new sarcoidosis trials going on right now, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and that really comes out of a lot of the hard work that FSR has been doing with our partners to help um, get more medications on the rounds for patients. I think when I started the podcast, which is coming up on two years, there may have been one clinical trial yeah. going at that time. And now there's seven. Um, you know, those of you who aren't already on the patient registry, it's a great place to get to sign up and to get information about clinical trials. Whenever we have anyone that we work with to do recruiting, you get to know about it. We send you information on it. I mean, not everybody qualifies for a trial. And I think everyone kind of knows that to some degree, but it's always good to get those emails and to see like, maybe you qualify um, and get more information. And besides, even if you think you don't qualify, it's always worth reaching out um, through those emails, just to make sure um, uh, Chase, our senior research coordinator, works with folks through that. And he uh, definitely always responds to folks and make sure that they have the information they need to find out about what their eligibility is. Well, Mindy, what else do you want to talk about? What, what, what other reason, if somebody is listening, should they decide to attend the summit, either one day or two days, or just pop in for a few hours here and there? Yeah, I mean, I know that it's hard for folks to be on a camera or even if you're not on a camera, just to be at your computer for that long, that many days, two days in a row. It's, it's hard on everybody. Um, but at the same time, that's why we leave the platform open for two months after the summit. So you could come pop in Saturday. Maybe you're not feeling good. You know, patients with sarcoidosis, we know you might wake up and you had every intention to go to the summit on Saturday, the 30th, but you wake up and you just don't have it in you. And that is totally fine. The nice thing is every single session is available till September 30th through the platform. You can sign in anytime between the day that it, we open the doors. We virtually open the doors several days early on the 27th of July. So you can have access to the full platform, check out the speakers, see the sessions, check out the exhibit booth, figure out what you want to do, add stuff to your own agenda or not. Um, and then if you aren't able to make it on either one of those days or just one of those days or half a day or whatever, you can see all those sessions all the way through September 30th. The other nice thing is we do have three sessions running concurrently most times, unless it's a plenary session. And in that case, um, if you're having a hard time deciding, we can bounce between them, but also you can watch one and know, or be at one and know that you can watch the other one. You have until September 30th to watch the other one at your leisure. And, and honestly, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people do this every year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think last year over 300 people. Yeah. Uh, and I imagine there'll be even more people and it's, it's experts, it's our exhibitors, it's our staff, it's our patient advocates, our patient advisory committee. Um, it's our board of directors who participate and it's our patient community. It's really, I mean, John, I have to say this, this event is really for you guys, for you guys as caregivers. We do have one thing that's new this year is we do have a caregiver, a full caregiver track. I mean, it's not, every single session, but we have a pre-session on uh, July 21st, um, which is uh, learning to put together your caregiver toolkit, toolbox. Um, and then the sections, the other section is inside the summit. It's a full hour with the same uh, licensed clinical social worker, Wendy Griffith, um, and it's called the whole caregiver. And that'll, that'll deal more with the sort of mental health or sort of emotional kind of weight that comes with caregiving. Uh, and mm -hmm. we realize that caregivers or supporters really need their own space and opportunity to just kind of come together and talk. Uh, and then directly after that, 
we will be hosting with Wendy and um, Lindsay, who you've had on your program before, um, who's a caregiver. Her husband has cardiac sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. um, she will be supporting this caregivers and the other supporters as the um, co-host of the discussion session on caregiving. Awesome. So it's great to kind of get all those pieces together. You've got the piece to build your toolbox. So here's the, the sort of skill set or the things you need to know about being a caregiver at the summit. Here's how to support yourself emotionally when this is, can be hard. And then here's an open discussion led by someone who is also a caregiver. Uh, so it's a really cool opportunity for folks um, to share with their loved ones. Uh, and again, loved ones are also eligible for scholarships. Um, they're not able to support the cost of the registration. So I like to put mm -hmm. that plug out there too. You don't have okay. to just be a patient to be eligible for scholarship. But it's a really, really great opportunity. You don't necessarily have to have done one to get the other. There are going to be some uh, crossover there. But the goal is that they kind of build on one another and then end in an opportunity to really talk to other people who get it. Well, Mindy, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at the summit. Yeah, thanks, Sean. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the summit. And I'm looking forward to see everybody at the summit as well. If anybody has any questions about the summit, I'm um, just not sure if you want to go. Don't worry, I can definitely convince you if you email me or call me. <laughs> we'll put your contact information in the show notes. Great. A zombie just feeding at stumbling. Thanks to Mindy for joining me all the way from Berlin in Germany. Uh, there was a bit of breakup in our connection today. I apologize for that, but I think the information was well worth maybe pushing through a little bit of audio dropout. And in our post pandemic, I say post pandemic world, um, I, I think that we've all been on Zoom a lot. We understand that sometimes that happens, and that was a Zoom interview that I did with Mindy, and uh, we, we did the best we could under the, under the circumstances. I do want to hit on just a few of the sessions from both Saturday and Sunday, and I'll be brief. The best thing for you to do if you really want detailed information is go to the FSR website. There's a link in the show notes, and then scan and read to your heart's content if you want to know more about what's being offered. Offer. And I will tell you that I plan to jump in and out of several of the sessions, and I'm in, in particular hoping to see what Dr. Flanagan, which uh, whom uh, Mindy mentioned, has to say about NeuroSARC, since uh, that is what's ailing me. So let me just tell you a little bit more about what the foundation has planned. And again, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but I do want to touch on uh, some of the different things that will be happening on the various days with the foundation. So let's look at, first of all, Saturday. And here we go. So Saturday, oops, I called up Sunday first. Here's the Saturday agenda, excuse me. So you've got the exhibit hall and everything opens at 8 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and then uh, from uh, their coffee break is ongoing. That'll be from 10 to 5. Then there's the unveiling possibilities promise of progress and that will sort of set the stage for the whole weekend okay and that's from 10 to 10 15 a.m central time all right and still looking at saturday a couple of other things at uh, 11 a.m central time sarcoidosis 101 for pulmonary that's also when the chronic pulmonary session will be so you choose which one you think you're in then they're going to look at skin sarcoidosis, gastric sarcoidosis later in the day, mindfulness and meditation, which is very helpful for people who are trying to kind of deal with how their life got a curveball by sarcoidosis. And that's uh, that's been very helpful uh, to a lot of people. And we've talked about that here on the podcast. Uh, then a discussion about communicating with your healthcare team, because that can be super difficult. Sometimes your doctor talks too much and listens not enough. Sometimes you just don't know how to ask the right questions. Uh, but, but it's really, really important that you know how to talk to your doctor because you wait and wait and wait for your appointment to come. You sit in the room, the doctor shows up, and all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. And now it's three or four months before you can ask those questions again. So communicating with your healthcare team is so critical. Uh, also on Saturday, uh, there'll be a session on steroids and sarcoidosis. They're calling that balancing the burden. Couldn't agree more with that because sometimes the prednisone is worse than the 
the disease itself. And of course, there are long-term effects from prednisone that we've talked about a lot. So you need to look at, mm, when do I get off of this? Because I don't want to do permanent damage that's even worse than the sarcoidosis. So that's uh, that's uh, one of the sessions. And then there'll be a session that's called Secure Your Own Mask Helping Others, which goes back to the old airline thing. If you're on an airplane, the oxygen masks drop down because there's some sort of an issue. They say, put your mask on first before helping the person beside you because you're no good to anybody if you can't function. So if you've got a child beside you or someone who is not as able as you, the idea is you put your mask on first. Well, that's sort of uh, an analogy, if you will, for how caregivers can help people with sarcoidosis. But you've got to get your head on straight and you've got to know what you're dealing with before you can help your sarcoidosis patient in your family. All right, looking ahead to Sunday, Life Hacks for Living with Sarcoidosis. That's the session that I'll be hosting. That's at uh, 10 a.m., 10, 10 a.m. on uh, Central Time on Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Then there's a session on neurosarcoidosis, fatigue management, uh, unveiling clinical trials. There are a number of new clinical trials out there, which are great news because that means they're moving forward in trying to find drugs to help fight sarcoidosis. Right now, everything we take is a drug that was originally designed for some other disease. Uh, insurance companies don't like that. So wouldn't it be great if some drugs emerged that are sarcoidosis specific? And then cardiac sarcoidosis is on the menu, uh, and of course, networking and exhibit hall. And then there will be an answering your medical questions panel at 320 Central Time on Sunday, which is where you can queue up. And if you haven't gotten answers to your questions, well, it'll be right there. So that's just a quick look at everything that is happening with respect to the uh, upcoming summit. So I hope to see you there. I'll be there, and uh, I just think that it's the greatest opportunity for those of us with SARC to gather, to find other people who are dealing with what we're dealing with, and to get straight answers from the very top people in the, literally in the world. So that's the upcoming summit. Thanks again to Mindy for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this special edition of the SARC Fighter Podcast. Till next time, keep fighting. Trying to keep up the pace Dead man walking